Hello, everyone. Um, I fell in love with Resin Crete not too long ago. It was before the holidays that Jay Diction had sent me a sample kit. I fell in love with it. Just fell in love with it. So uh, recently, I was making up some painting kits for children for an art show I did recently, trying different different means of how to paint, uh, more so for the adults, but for the kids, I had little painting strips for them. But I want to show you today how I came across this beautiful finish for your resin crete. So stay with me and I'll show you what I used. Okay, be right back. <music> Hello everyone, this is Billy. Welcome to Billy Home and Creations. Welcome newcomers. Thank you for subscribing. I want to welcome you here to my uh, little place in the world where I do UV resin, uh, now resin create, uh, the odd little art or craft project, and um, I enjoy it very much. So welcome aboard. Anyway, what I want to show you today is some resin create pieces that I broke. I broke them, um, so I kept them. And this is what I'm doing with them. So let me show you the unicorn first. Now, this was a hard one to get out of the mold. I know you've seen the unicorn mold. I've never done it in resin, but I tried it in resin Crete. And of course, I broke the horn off. So um, I, I try very hard to fix something if there's a flaw. It's, it's in my nature. So um, anyway, what I did with this is put a beautiful finish on her. Now, the colors on the mane and the tail, they look, um, what I want, they, they look pastel. But actually, these colors were very, very dark. I used alcohol ink when I painted this one. And then I put a little bit of diamond studs around the horn because that's what broke off and you could see where it broke so I glued it on and tried to fix it. So today I'm going to show you how to do this finish. I'm going to put that aside here. Now for instance there's so many ways you can color these. The lion, now he had some flaws. Where were they? There were some nicks. Nicks in his knee. Um, God, was that the only one? I had more problem with his legs and his knees. So um, I just painted this with markers. Just um, your regular, I had watercolor markers and I also used some um, Sharpie markers to color him. Let me give you an example of what I made for the kids too. And I also kept for myself. I made little magnets in sets of six that uh, they could paint. These turned out cute. These were uh, the extras, so I just kept those. I haven't done anything with these yet, and I won't for a while. But I want to show you these moles. Now, I kept this little girl. This is a bunny, Easter bunny, with the sweetest face. And I think I have this on video. When I, when I did a second video on Resin Crete, I did some little Easter bunnies. Very cute. I got this off of Amazon. There's three different kinds, and they're sitting in a in a, a head of lettuce or cabbage. So those are really cute. Now, um, when I first started Resin Crete, I did seahorses. Well, I broke this one's tail. I poured it too thin, and um, I just glued that together. I'm not going to deal with him today. What I'm going to work on today is this beautiful dragonfly. Of course, I broke the antennas off. So uh, when this is painted, I'm going to go ahead and drill in the head and I'll put some wire antennae on there, but we'll do that at the very last. I don't want to work around the antennae as I paint. So that's what I'm going to start on next, but I, um, I just cleaned up my paints. I just made a video not too long ago and I can't remember the number of it, but I can link it uh, down below in the descriptions. And I put my paints on the wall in some old tins, so I got them out of totes. Well, what did I do the other day? Well, I, 
I went shopping. I had a little extra money. It was the last bit of my van money, and I thought, well, I'm splurging on myself. So uh, aside from making a Let's Resin purchase, I found some new paint on Amazon, and this stuff is so cool. This is called Iridescent Acrylic Paint by Hissico. I guess that's how you say it. And 16 colors. The colors are back here and they're gorgeous. For instance, let me show you another piece that I just finished painting with these paints. They're fabulous. So look at this day. These, uh, I'm going to call them sunflowers, but I'm sure they're daisies. But I initially started uh, painting these with acrylics, just regular acrylics. Then I got these paints, and I was going to leave these white, but then I thought, well, let's try the yellow. This is one coat of that yellow paint, and look at the shimmer. Look at the shimmer and shine. It is so pretty. Very, very pretty. And what I did was break this one, too, is why I kept it. I broke this flower off of here. So between this flower and the butterfly, and th see, this is still wobbly. The technique I'm going to use uh, to show you how to tone these colors down, um, we're going to use both of these, and I'm wanting to frame them, but I can't get to my frames. My frames are just stacked in the closet, and I've got totes in front, and I've got a, a shelf in front, and I can't get my frames, but I have something in mind um, to use for a frame on these. Now, it may be barnwood, but I'm looking more at another uh, thing that I had in my shop that's been sitting there for years getting dusty. So when we're done painting those, we'll work on how we're going to present these. So let me move all of this out of the way and get myself some water and I'll be right back. Okay, I think I'm ready. My only um, doubt is what colors to actually paint these wings, but I'm going to try uh, and just ad-lib. I haven't looked at a picture or anything. Now I have my water in a cup with a little Dawn dishwashing soap inside. Uh, I always put that in my water for my brushes so they're easier to clean. Um, what else do I have? I've got some fine brushes here and I have some micro brushes and I pulled out a few of these paints. Now, I guess maybe I'll start with the bottom and work my way up. So I want the wings lighter than the body. Now let's look at these colors. In these jars, they look like regular paint. I mean, they're, they, they don't look flashy or that colorful, but they all have this little protective lid on top that if you just peel this up and I should put the other ones back on the ones I've already opened whoa well I didn't mean for that to happen but anyway look at the shimmer in that now you can see what color it actually is and I just messed up I've got paper towels always handy Always handy. We'll have to cover that up. Let's wipe it off. I just put a puppy pad down so you could see. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go a solid pink around the edges of the wings. And uh, you can see where I've sanded a little bit. But I'm just going to do the best I can to get started on this. And uh, fast forward. Let's get a little bit done on here. Uh, I don't have, I need to get more brushes. I like the wedged, wedged brushes or the flat brushes. I have better control myself. I'm not very good at with brushes that have the longer tips. I don't know why that is, but I do, I do better with these. Here's, let's use this one. I used that one earlier. Feels a little stiff. This came with a, a nail kit with uh, nail gels 
So I imagine that this is a silicone brush versus a hair brush, or whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to use my standard. And I have a paint tray. I always just use these when I paint. Um, they get dry, I peel it off, and I save it to put in resin. You can do that too. So are we in frame? Oh, and look what I did here. I'm just getting with this. This uh, is called Orchid Flash, and it's wanting me to do something with it, apparently. Just a very, looks more like a lavender. And uh, I could have sanded that better, but it goes on so nicely. And this is light, very light lavender. And I'm just going to go... I should have shook it. That's what I didn't do. Oh, back to square one, Billy. Shake the paint. Shake the paint. Mix that up. All right. Whoop. See, I'm really, let's just get some of this off of here now. Go down the sides. But is pretty light and that's okay. So we're gonna be a bit translucent so translucent so I'm just gonna go around the edges here. Now if you use markers or maybe other brand uh, acrylic paints they really soak into this uh, resin treat. They soak in dark so if you would prefer to use markers that's up to you. It'll turn out nice, I think, no matter what or how you do it or what you use. I just want these wings to be light. And I might put a couple of coats on. Just see how it goes. But it sure is nice paint. That yellow really surprised me. This isn't as going. This isn't as going. This is not as deep of a color as that yellow was because that yellow was just one coat and it is pretty. But I want to tone it down. For some places this doesn't want to take the paint. That could be where I sanded too. I'm not sure. But I'm just going to keep going. And just spend my time um, watching YouTube <laughs> videos as I work along here. I have my laptop in my craft room. I'm catching up. Uh, I need to watch, you probably see this after Easter, but I need to watch all the artists that went in on the Easter collaboration with Mini Scenes GB. I have a video there also. So be sure to uh, Look at those if you haven't already. I don't know how long Tracy will keep that up. I'm sure she won't take it down. Um, it's hard to say. I don't, I don't know. But there's probably no sense in taking it down. I know Claire, when Claire does her collaborations, she leaves hers up, I think. I know, I think. That's two different um, contradictions, isn't it? But... Just get that off the lid here, and then I'll put it the lid on. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to run the camera through this whole process because um, I just had to clear a bunch of memory off of it, and I don't have my new camera set up. Still can't get that program to get onto my laptop. So I'll catch you when the wings are done and then we'll find another color, okay? Stay with me, thank you. Okay, I just went around the edges now and I dug out the, what they call, pink flash. And um, I'm gonna just go in this one, these lighter tipped areas of the wings with this and I may just use my micro brushes because I'm thinking 
as I go over with the darker colors, I can cover up, you know, where the paint doesn't need to be. Or the nice thing about using this uh, resin crete is you can always take your X-Acto knife and scratch off where you painted, but you didn't want the paint. So that's always a plus too. This is a pretty pink right there. There we go. Right there. And um, I try to be fugal. I'm not, I'm not a cheapskate, but I try to be fugal. And I don't know if any of you do this. You may, you may not. But if you've got a glob of paint left on your palette, there's no reason why you can't put it back in the container if you, you know if you don't want to waste it because that's what I do I just scrape what's left up and throw it back in the bottle uh, I guess that's how I roll I don't know but I don't like to waste that's why I like recycling and I'm just gonna get a little bit in see how this goes I'm not gonna be that neat about it and it would be easier to do markers I've just been in a painting kick lately, and I don't know why. Am I resorting back to my childhood? Because I have been loving to do nothing uh, lately but paint. Let's see if I can do better with this. Um, I have been painting like a young child lately. And, and loving every minute minute of it and you know what I noticed too um, I've been I, I, I've just been crafty all my life it's just been my thing my mom was quite strict and at a certain time which was rather early I needed to be in my bedroom with my homework done or find something to do so I painted and I taught myself how to crochet uh, she taught me how to knit but I, I spent a my time um, a lot of time by myself and I think that uh, as an adult helped me grow I mean it's a benefit I, I don't mind being by myself but I dive into being creative and um, there's a lot of therapy in there I could tell you some stories um, of when I had to see therapists maybe one day I'll share that with you but I'm not ashamed of it, but they didn't do me a damn bit of good. I have to say that honestly. The only thing they told me was to be creative. But uh, anyway, yeah, I'm a, I'm a nutcase. So, not really. I consider myself a pretty well-rounded woman. And uh, was able to see and do a lot growing up. And is in my adult life. So, I don't know why I got off track on that. Just a tangent. Oh, I like that pink. See how that shimmer? I don't know if you can see it because it's so small. It's really pretty. I know what I was going to say. And I don't know if you out there being artisans yourselves. It seems like when my frame of mind is disturbed shall I say, um, tedious, being tedious with the projects like this is where I can just go, uh, when I'm not doing the video, I can just go and be alone with my thoughts, and um, I find it different, it's a different type of, uh, should we call it a treatment? Yeah, why not, it's my treatment, um, it's different. When my psyche or my, you know, emotions are feeling, uh, say, up to par, a little better, I can uh, do something quickly, be happy with it, and um, I don't have to, <clears throat> what should I say, go so much into detail or go so much into, uh, am I trying to be philosophical? I don't know. Um, it, there's a difference for me, there's a difference and I don't know if it is with you, but you know, maybe with the hustle and bustle, sometimes you just need to get into that special place. And I find that with something, uh, tedious, 
or what people would call tedious. Something to where I need patience and it takes me a while. Other things I can whip up in a snap and be very happy with that. And um, still consider it a job well done and not, you know, thrown together. But there's a difference and I'm wondering if, if you've ever thought about that. Or if that's how it works for you. So maybe I'm just in this coloring mode for some kind of weird reason. And I was going to say, you know, and I talk a lot. Welcome, new people. I get on these talking tangents. But I was told, was I told or did I read about it? I might have read about it because I went out on a search at one time in my life for, you know, peace of mind and some healing. And it said, they said, someone said, if you go back to your childhood, don't blame your mother. It's not your mother's fault. I'm not going there. But um, if you go back to your childhood and you pick out three things that you did as a child that brought you joy, those three things that brought you the most joy when you were young and innocent and playful, what did you do that brought you the most joy? And then it said, take those three things and bring them into your life as an adult. And you know what? Every My three things have actually um, became a big part of me in my life. You know, my three things were um, crafts, art, painting, create, creativity was, was the main factor. And so throughout my life, I've always been creative. And then I sang all the time when I was a kid. I was singing. Wherever I went, I was singing. And uh, so then through my adult life, I became a band member. For what, 47 years? Was that what I thought I figured out? Yeah. I played music or sang mostly for all those years of my life and found the greatest joy in that. And the third thing is my animals. I just wonder, look at the three things that you went through as a child that brought you joy. Are you still doing those things? I think it's important. I think it's important and it makes it makes sense. So there's my ramble on that. When I come back with a different color, who knows, might go on a different tangent. Let's just see. I'm going to um, pause you and I'm going to keep going with this beautiful pink. See you in a little while. Okay, I got out of my Zen mode. <laughs> I ended up just using the tip of the micro uh, brush without the cotton bit or that little fuzzy part off the top. Uh, worked a lot better. I just dabbed them in the holes. Now I'm going to build build up my colors and I'm going to go to the next lightest, which would be this um, purple flash, which is probably going to be darker. I think I think I'll just put it in this area here because I might have to bring the pink into this part. Uh, we'll just have to see. I don't know why, but I just might have to. And let me get this lid off. Did I shake it? Yes, I thought I did. So many pretty colors. It doesn't have white, though. There's no white in this set. The only white paint I have left is some Martha Stewart white. That's pretty dark. And I uh, broke the broke the little bottle once, taped it up. Now I've got it in a glass jar, and it just doesn't seem to be working out good for me anymore. So I might have to get some white paint. Let's see what this purple looks like here. It's pretty dark. I could mix a few, I bet. Hmm. Don't know, because I want to do... There's another purple here. Blue violet flash and the blue flash. Ooh, let's try this one. 
Let's see what this looks like. Where should I put it? Mm, yeah, in this area here. I can go ahead and use a one of these. Let's see what this looks like. Now that the brush is hard. And what I think I'm going to do is um, probably take a marker when I do the top outlining. That would be, whoops, look at me mess up. That would be the easier route to take, I'm thinking. And I did, when I uh, was buying from Timu, where are they? I had them here. Oh, oh, right beside me. When I was buying from Timu, oh my, I'm done shopping. I can't do it no more. Um, so she says, I got these metallic colored pens. And uh, these are water-based. And they are... Uh, They've got some pretty colors in there. Whoops, there you go. But the nibs aren't very fine. So say if we did a purple outline. Um, the, the tips aren't that fine, but I think it'll work. I think these will work for that. We'll see. When we get there. So meanwhile, I'm just back at daubing the purple in the little spaces. Okay, I'm back looking at these greens. I want to bring a little green into it. Um, looks like a sloppy job, doesn't it? Well, it probably is. <laughs> we'll clean it up. We'll clean it up as we go. I'm just thinking about bringing a little green into this, and um, this kit comes with Dragon Flash Green, Emerald Flash Green, and uh, Green Flash. I think I'm going to go with the lighter green. We're going to going to do a little something something with the lighter green, so I don't need those. Although although that darker green is very pretty. Uh, this, I think, is what I used earlier, and it is, uh, yeah, it's, it's the lightest green. So, I think what I'm going to do is just take, oh, I know I want to go dark purple, blue. Oh, I need to add some blue. Let's, let's just do this little bit here with this uh, emerald flash green see what happens won't need much just a daub that's very pretty see right there oh I love these colors I'm gonna go back to my um I've been using this I'm just daubing daubing and rubbing whoops get out of there pink lid I'm gonna save those little caps oh there's a hair is that Annie's hair Annie's not in here tonight. She went to bed early. She's on my bed, I'm sure of it. I sure love that girl. She is my sweetheart. Little Annie Fanny. I got her. She's going on 16. If she's not 16 already. Um, years ago, my husband had to take a wounded swan to our veterinarian and uh, he had these two gray kittens in there and uh, they I don't understand this but I wasn't there but my husband told me that they had raised these babies since they were two days old because the mother was hit by a car killed and someone brought the babies in well if they couldn't find a home for them they were going to put them down. So he brought one home. And I said, well, and then told me the story. And I said, well, you better go get that other one. This isn't fair. You can't just bring one home and have the other one, you know, put to its demise. So we brought the other one home. And my daughter took her. Her name was Izzy. She was mean. Oh, that was a mean cat, that one. But, uh... 
she got mad at me and said, well, you took the nice cat. Well, sorry, I didn't realize at the time, but Annie is a very nice girl, and she's my sweet one. As she gets older, she doesn't let me out of her sight, that's for sure. So I'm surprised she's not in here with me. So I'm going to go ahead and paint the little bit of green. Oh, I might, I think I might just go ahead. Well, I don't know. We'll see. I'll be, I'll be painting and be quiet. Once again, I'm back. Once again, I'm back. Let's change colors. I went ahead with the green and I went down the sides of the body and around and up part of the head there. So I should have scratched. I've got that pink there. I should have scratched it off, but I just went ahead and put the green on. Don't think it matters. Now I'm going to go with the blue. And this is a blue flash. And we'll top it off with the purple. So I won't stop between those two colors. I'll just go ahead and get the blue and the purple on. And then we'll do the outlining. All right. Oh, let's look at this first. This one hasn't been opened. Oh, ooh, ooh, look at that. Oh, I love blue. Pretty, pretty blues. You know, I got to thinking, could use regular acrylic because uh, after I, whoops, after I get this technique down, I might even cover this up. Who knows? I don't know. But I'm just going with the feeling. Going with the feeling tonight. It's night. It's, is it almost midnight? Gosh, yes, I'm on the late night schedule again. Get some blue on there. All right. See you soon. Well, I'm still at it. I'm starting to wear myself out a little bit. But um, I went ahead and did the blue and the darker purple. And I went ahead and took the darker purple. Went over that really pale pink. Uh, we're not going to see that much anyway. Now, the next thing I need to do, and I'll probably... Oh, I might truck along with it this evening, but I won't hold you up. Um, is to do the filigree tram and accent all of these pieces. Um, I think I'm going to go to a marker. I think I'm going to dig out my uh, fine and ultra fine Sharpies. Uh, maybe I'll do it in blue or purple. One of the two. I don't want to go black because when we do the technique to somewhat fade this out, well, I guess the black would show better. Maybe I'll just do black. Okay, typical black. I'm going to paint the eyes black and do the outline. I might test a little bit here and there and change my mind. But until then, I will see you all in the morning and have a wonderful evening, day. Whatever you're doing, just do it. Have fun with it. Just have fun with it. And do it the best you can. Okay? I think I'll go to bed. I'm rambling. All right. Good night, everyone. See you in a bit. Bye. Hello, everyone. Well, I finished doing the outlining in black marker on the dragonfly, and I'll tell you what, that was a chore. That was a chore. Uh, my tip of, on that is do your outlining first, then drop your paint in the little crevices. It works a lot better. So today, and I have that aside, um, I kind of started painting on it, so... I apologize I didn't record what I did to it, but I will do the same thing to the flower when we're ready. Anyway, I went to this garage and I I knew I had oh, frames. I got frames up the butt over there. Um, I can't get to the frames in my closet, so I was looking for frames in the garage. I came across this silver silver glass one. Now I paid a dollar ninety nine for this at a second hand store, but it's rather heavy, so I don't want to go. Don't want to go very heavy with the frame. Then I found a piece of plywood, and um, these are approximately what 12 by 15. Insides are more like a 14, 14 and a half standard uh, frame. But this is heavier yet, so I don't want to go here. Don't want to use that one. Save that for something else. But I did find this one. This is just a wood frame, and it's already coming apart. Um, let's see what we have. We've got the wood frame. It's fairly good shape, but we're gonna we're gonna paint it anyway. 
It's got these latches here that just swing over to close, so that'll be good. Uh, glass won't need the glass. I would I would put this under glass if the frame was deeper, like a memory box frame or something. Don't need the glass, but you know you can pour resin on glass. It works perfect. It works fine. Here's a a mat. Put that away. And this is pretty thick. Um, what kind of board is this? It's not plywood. It's about a oh three sixteenths of an inch wide. This is a good side. This is the back side. I paid two forty nine for this frame. So we're going to work with this. And I think I can go ahead. I'm hoping. So I want the back to look nice. If the back doesn't look nice, it doesn't look finished. Um, but I could always put cork on the back to cover this up. I don't know if my technique will cover these holes unless I put something in it. And I'm not going to dig out spackle just for something like this. So let's work on the good side. I'll worry about the back side later. I'm going to go ahead and get them stickers off. Let me put this this other out of my way so I can maneuver in here and I'll be right with you. I don't know what's happening. I, I, I just talked for five minutes and, and lost it. Now it seems to be recording. So what I'm doing, geez, uh, E6000, I'm gluing in the backboard and then I'm taping off the edges because I'm going to paint gesso on the front and I don't want it on the back. Now it seems to be working, I hope. Well, you didn't want to hear my spiel anyway, it was just babble. Okay. Get this corner. Got a blade here. I'm just gonna I should put this angle. I'm just cutting that extra off right there. Got extra tape. Up there. Come on. That will work. Okay. Now I think if you haven't seen me work with gesso before, please wear gloves because it is a very hard uh, thing to get off your hands sometimes. Put gesso in there. Too. I'm going to leave that glue right there because I'm going to glue something else in there. Maybe I'll take the hot gun to it. Get this off of here. All right, let me just let this set a minute. I'm going to get my glue gun uh, heated up because I hadn't even thought about that till just now. And I'll be right back. Okay, you know, I just realized there's not a hanger on this frame, so we'll have to add one to it. All right, well, I'm going to take my glue gun, and I'm going to put a little border inside of here. I thought of different many... <laughs> I thought of many different things to put on there, but I came to this conclusion. I have this... Uh, these beaded pearls that I don't ever foresee using for anything real special. Not that I'm aware of. Um, it's kind of going to be similar to the hummingbird on the flower, or the heart. The hummingbird with the hearts that I did over Valentine's. 
So I'm just going to glue this all the way around. And I'm going to use daubs rather than a straight line because I don't want the glue to be, you know, because this is very pretty, but it's got the space there. I think I'm just going to do one, one bead or one, one, what do I want to say? One round. I'll just do one round. I'm going to go. I wonder if I can see the space. I might probably get all buggered up that way. To guess. So we'll just do this. There we go. We'll just slip it under. I could bring them together. How would that look? Nope. It's sticking already. We're doing it this way. Just like that. A little glue. No pressure. You know what I've done before is I, uh, and it's so cool under resin, but I don't think we're going to resin this, is, uh, oh my goodness, lace. I, I did a Victorian, or a couple of Victorian plaques, and uh, I put lace in them, and kind of folded it and gathered it and it turned out so cool under the resin i mean it was still protruding it wasn't completely under the resin but it was let's say resined i had resined it and it was really really cool stuff i wonder this corner is going to be it'll have to be that little one in the corner gonna have a curve to it shucks oh dear maybe I better cut that double up on that when that happens how I wonder how that will work probably not the greatest my poor little scissors okay so I, yeah you can't see I'm in this corner and I wish I could get right well I will I'll just make that happen just make that happen. Double it up. Oh, but I didn't do it over here. Doesn't matter. I don't think it'll be noticeable. Let's just keep going. I'm going under, push, under. Excuse me, push. Let's get it where it's where I want it to be. I'm not squeezing enough glue. Ouch. I don't have it turned all the way up where their little flowers are. I don't think that's going to matter. Ooh. This trim would be nice if you were doing, um, oh, I did dream catchers before, big ones, you know, like five foot long ones. I used probably some of this stuff on that, those. Or I could have found it at a yard sale. Uh, uh. Don't go to the used uh, thrift stores too much. Because I know myself. But boy, I hid directly for the craft department. Get that off. Move that just a little bit. Squeeze this one in. A 
I'm not going to double it up. Just let it go like that. Curious to see. Oh, it doesn't have a price tag on it. I wonder how old this is. Whatever it was, it was a big stool. Stool, spool. Gee. Okay. This is going to be a soft picture, I think. It's going to be, I think it'd be really pretty. In a little girl's room. Or if I can make it elegant, who knows where it would end up. Come on, I'm missing my cues here. I was doing better at an angle like this. Yes, I was. Mm -hmm, quite. I don't know if we should call this a art craft or a resineers project, or not a resineers, a uh, resin creek project. Almost, we've almost got it, my friends. Got this right here, I think. Well, that used up a few feet. Stay down. Just that over. If my arm is in the way. There. Now. That should be set good enough to start painting. Now I'm going to put that away. Okay, handy. All right. Gesso. This is my gesso. Oh, acrylic gesso. Now this is an old bottle, but I do have, I have it listed in my Amazon storefront. It might look different. But, uh, yeah, this is gesso. You need gloves. Like I said, if you paint with gesso and get it on your hands, it's a bugger to wash off but apparently it's water based but it's very thick very thick stuff so that's what I'm going to do next is paint this frame with a good coat of gesso and we're not done yet and it's just a big plastic piece of something turn my glue gun off 
And I have a glove. I've got some water with a little dishwashing soap in there. And an old brush. This is my decoupage brush, but it works for my gesso. You don't want to ruin your good brushes. Give this a good shake. I guess we're all right. It doesn't take too long to dry. Look at that gooey. See how gooey it is? Get that dry stuff off. I won't worry about it yet. Just get a good glob in there. See, it's thick. Now this is going to seal, seal your wood for paint or whatever else you're going to use on your wood. So it's a sealant and I still see little strings. I should have plucked off. We'll be painting them in. That's all right too, I suppose. Get some of those off of there. You know, when I was young and in school, when we did art and crafted, we never had a glue gun. I don't think there was such a thing as a hot glue gun back then. A lot of things we didn't have back then. It's coming out. I need another bit of glue right there in that spot. Come on, you. Don't fail me now. Stick. I hope that doesn't break away while I'm painting. Let's just hope. I'll have to be careful. All these strings up here. Just one following me. All right. For as little as those are down here, we probably won't see them. Okay, this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be painting this frame, and hey, my camera's still recording. So, so I'll start on the wood first, go around, get the uh, inside beading done, and I'll come back to you when I'm finished with this. And by then, it should be dry, and we can proceed. All right, I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, I think I have a fairly good coat on here, but oh my goodness, if you were watching me glue these beads down and thinking after I said I'm going to paint it, how easy is that going to be? It was not easy. I had to daub. I had to daub and daub and daub and get down in there in between. Uh, wasn't a good idea. So, if you were to do this, get your beads down after you paint. No, Annie was just here walking across here. Uh, I wasn't recording, but I think she came to say hi. She went back to her pillow. All right, I'm going to get that hair off of there. Let's make this pretty. Okay, I'm going back to my one of my favorite te techniques, and that is my polyurethane, my squirt bottle. I have a little leftover from... Uh, I was playing with it yesterday. Polyurethane, white mica powder. I'm gonna go back to my beaver dust white. I hope I have enough to finish this project. If not, we'll have to make a change. But anyway, I'm gonna, how did I do? Let's see, I want to open this first. I'm just going to have a good squirt in there. That's probably, oh, two tablespoons, maybe. Probably don't need that much. And one big helping scoop. One big scoop of this 
white mica. Look at the sheen in that. That's very pretty. That's a very pretty sheen in that white. And the creme de la creme is my May Spring Dazzling Diamond. I like this. And it is so fine. Look at that. Is that something? That is gorgeous. So, I'm going to take a healthy, healthy scoop of that. And that's all we need. Polyurethane, Dazzling Diamond, and a white mica. Stir this up. I don't think I'll have to add anything else to it. But there's my concoction. And once again, I'm going to have to pounce into the beads. So put the beads on after you do this. I was not thinking whatsoever. So here's an old brush. You just come down here. I'm just going to start pouncing that in and then I'll do the edges. But I'm going to do the whole whole board, whole board here in this mixture. So for now I'm just going to tap that in there and when I get around to looking I can see what I've missed but it's runny enough so I'm hoping it'll just fall down there but yeah this was a bugger really. I was not thinking about this when I did it. at all. So we'll go under, pounds, in. Figured if I went sideways on the brush that goes down pretty good. So once again I'm wasting time because I did something the hard way. Piece of glue there, I don't know. That is something black. Get rid of that. So I'll uh, come back. <laughs> I'll come back. What time is that? It's almost 10 o'clock at night, my time. I'll be at this a bit. I've been watching YouTube uh, collaboration videos a little, a little at a time, and I have a video that. I edited and it is getting ready to, uh, what is it called? Q? It's queuing right now. Or keeching. Keech, keech. Too many words today. Before I can upload it to YouTube. Something black on there. So I will leave you until I have this completely painted. It'll probably be tomorrow. So. Have a good night, everyone. I'll see you shortly. Hi, everyone. I'm back with this frame. I did all the painting with my mica powders and uh, polyurethane. And then I let it dry. I have pulled this out four or five times to look at it thinking, I don't like it. Do I like it? Don't I like it? I almost scrapped it, but I'm not one to scrap things, so I'm going to backtrack I don't know why I don't like it. I don't like these beads. That's the thing. I don't like the beads. And I thought, leave the beads. Add something else. Well, I played with that idea. Nope. Uh, leave the beads. Leave it plain. No. Then I'm thinking, well, I can't put glass over this. It'll be a total dust collector with these beads on it. Um, I'm taking the beads off. <laughs> I have another idea. I'm taking these beads off. I'm just not happy. And I know I have to backtrack and do more work to this. But I just can't. It was a toss up and the beads got to go. So anyway, I'm, I'm babbling. I wanted to get this video out for you. So I'm going to remove these beads. And I know there's going to be marks and scuffs. And I might have to, you know, do some scraping, a little sanding. But they're going to go. So when I see you next, 
I will have a whole new game plan. Okay, so I will see you shortly. Take care, everyone. Enjoy your evening or day. Quit talking, Billy. Just do it. Okay. Hi, I'm back. I couldn't. I couldn't leave you out of out of all this fun. I had. I had to share it with you. Well, I just. I just yanked those beads off, and they're in the trash. But let me show you what kind of mess I'm gonna end up with. So I've got this paint scraper with a blade in it, and uh, I'm just gonna. I'm just going around and see. Look at. Look at the this, the work I made for myself with this decision. But I just wanted to show you. You, I shouldn't say yeah, because I don't care for that. Show you uh, what what I got, what I have going. Speak, Billy. But anyway, yeah, this will take me a bit. So when I come back, we'll we'll get it together. I will have it together. But I just wanted to show you how and what I'm looking at here. So believe me, though, I'll fix it. Okay. Once again, take good care. Hugs. Be right back. Hello, everybody. I'm back. Let me show you what I've been up to. I cleaned up where those beads were. And, of course, they left a heck of a mess. So I, I scraped off what I could. I went over that area with my gesso. And now I remembered I had this lace. Now, this is... Uh, Instant Lace Anywhere is what it's called, and the picture shows how uh, back in the day, ladies would decorate their shelves with this lacy uh, stuff here, and it's, it's plastic. It's not lace, really. It's plastic, and it has this band on it uh, where you peel the tape off, and it's sticky, so they would put that on the edge of their shelves and things so I must have found this at a yard sale or something but it's come in handy for this I think I have an idea that I'll be happy with so what I'm doing now is I'm just I'm going to place this lace down here and I've been trying to miter the corners and I'm not real good at that but I've got it laid out somewhat like that and what I've done is I'm cutting I'm where am I in screen okay I'm going around this edge here and I'm cutting this off right at the edge because I can save this piece here to go up around the sides because there, it's still marred here where the sides were where the beads hit it and the glue and everything so this will fit perfectly along the side so I can glue that on once I take this plastic sheet off and that will hide all of that nasty mess I made so just cut this last piece off right at the edge not being very neat anyway there we go so now this piece will go up towards the top and I can turn this for you a little bit so you can see the top barely see the top I've got a light in the way it's evening again and I'll probably be up late doing this so I can have this video out for you but I'm gonna I, I cut it extra long, but I'm going to have it in the corner there. Mire these edges. And I'm just going to take a bead of this um, B7000 all-purpose adhesive. And I'm going to go right along the edge and glue this plastic lacing down. And I might take a tad, you know, and just put it on the a few places here and there. So, um, yeah, that's what I'll be doing next. I can pause you real quick and I'll carry on and get this glued down and I'll show you what we're going to put on top of that edge, which I think will make it a lot nicer. Okay, I'm pausing you. Okay, I'm back. I went all the way around with the lace and I did get all the edges done with the 
the rest of the lace that I cut off and I'm just going to go into this corner here and cut this little last piece off. If I can kind of saw it I guess a little bit. It's plastic and I have to glue that a little bit I guess. Now I'm happy. Now the beads are gone. I feel a lot better about this. But I can't leave it this way. Just can't leave it this way. So the other thing I'm going to put down, because you can see the rough edges of the lace, you can st still see a little bit of where I peeled off the beads. So where did I put it? Next step. I have this trim. This is a uh, Celebrate it was four ninety nine now one seventy seven. I have no idea where I got this, but uh, anyway, I'm going to cut it too wide and glue it just like that and go all the way around. all that's gonna gonna be like and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up a little bit of my oh, in this lid polyurethane in my squeeze bottle what did I do before I went I don't think I'm gonna need a lot but we'll just give it about yay that's how that's how I'm gonna measure it it's about yay right there um, spoon. Now I organized my workspace with my little three-tiered um, Let's Resin tray that I did last week. Moved things around. Now, here we go. But my corner that was a mess, it's still kind of a mess. But I have, I have rearranged. It's, it's not just thrown in a pile. So I feel better about that. All right, this is a beaver dust white. I haven't heard from them lately. I need to contact them again. Oh, there we go. This is a pretty white. This is white, white, white. And what did I do before? A heap and scoop. And I noticed with this frame, um, it might be this white, or I don't know if it's the um, Dazzling Diamonds, but you can see there's gold gold in it. There's silver and gold, like tiny, tiny gold flecks. White with gold flecks. It's really pretty. I like it. Okay, where'd I go? I just grabbed it. Oh, not my face. May spring. Dazzling diamond. Don't breathe this, Annie. Hold your breath, honey. I think the gold is in this. I think I think the gold is in that. I sure like it. Good scoop. I can't remember if I did two scoops of the beaver dust or not. That I can't remember. And I, do I have my glue sticks handy? Yes, look, I was able to just grab one. Mix this up. Then by morning, this should all be dry, and I will, we will get back to the flowers. Tomorrow is Friday, so I really want to finish this for you. God, I don't know. It has enough white in it. Maybe I did two beaver dusts. Can't remember. Should have wrote it down. Let me put a little more in. What did I just say? Beaver dust? No, I'm going to do a little more dazzling diamond. Because everything else is pretty much white. 
I'm not going to gesso that trim. Oh, do it, Bill. There it is. That's what it is. I see the gold. But this has lasted me a long time. This is the only Mayspring product I have. I sure like it. I think that I first saw that from Miss Felicia at the Crafting Nook. Hello, Miss Felicia. I am missing you, and I hope to see you soon. I just watched your video the other day, and we all want to see you come back to us. But take your time when you're ready. Anyway, she was one of the first ladies I, I watched when I started uh, YouTube and I really enjoy what she does but she um, I think she's sponsored by Maspring and that's when I first came across their product so I really fell in love with that dazzling diamond okay I'm gonna go for it even though it's wet here and there let's oh look at that there, Billy. I'll let the other draw. Let's get this lace done. I'm not going to cover it, it up too badly, you know, or too much. I just want it to not fill up the holes. Hopefully it'll fall through the holes. If it fills up the holes, that's fine, too. But I'm just going to get it to match the rest of the frame. So I'll let you go. This is what I'm going to do for the rest of the evening. Paint this up. Get geared up for tomorrow. And we should be able to finish this project. Okay. Good night, everyone. I sure appreciate you. And uh, please like and subscribe. Yeah. I'll see you later. Bye. Hello, everyone. Um, I went ahead and put a second coat of... The Mica Powder Mix with the Dazzling Diamonds on the frame. It looks great. I'm very happy with it. So that's drying as we speak. I just did that. So now I'm going to show you what I do to get this finish. And I I did use the main. When I painted the main, I used alcohol inks. They were quite dark. And when I demolded this... With my resin crete, I uh, broke the horn off, so I just add a little bedazzle to it. Painted the eyes, and I think she turned out beautiful. She has a really pretty rainbow mane and tail. So, actually, it's the same concoction as what I used for the frame. So, and it takes several coats, but we're going to paint this entire flower... And hopefully I can get the same result in the yellow and green colors as I did with these alcohol inks. So my polyurethane, and I should mention this is polyurethane. Polyurethane, it's not um, a resin at all. It's not the polyurethane resin that um, I know most of you are getting familiar with. And I've, I've never used that myself. This is what you get at the hardware store for uh, finishing wood and things like that. But it works real good on resin and the resin treat or the eco pores. Now I've got a, I'm starting with about the same amount, two scoops of my May Spring Dazzling Diamond. This is so gorgeous. And then we'll add our white beaver dust. Oh, there we go. Got dazzling diamond all over my fingers already. I'm going to do a real healthy scoop of this. Oh, what's in there? Don't know. Probably all from the bag, I guess. We'll put that in there. I'm going to mix that up. How'd you get my brush out of the water? I've got it in some soap water right now, but we're just going to mix this up. And I'm just going to entire uh, paint the entire flower and tone all those colors down or practically make them disappear. But it, 
it's a very pretty finish and on top of the frame it's going to look lovely and I like I said I'm happy with the frame now those beads had to go oh my gosh and I actually think I'm going to put a thin layer of real uh, clear resin on top of the frame so I went behind the frame today and did a, a little bit of UV resin around the edges where the that heavy piece fits into the frame so we can kind of lock that in. That's what I that's what I'm hoping to do. I think I'll just resin a real light coat on the top. Let me grab my brush here. Kind of get that dried off a little bit. I think I've now designated this brush to my polyurethane mix. Okay, here we go. Just going to start coating. This is where I broke it, and it's glued, but once we get it set in the resin, um, it shouldn't be so wobbly. But it's going to take a few coats, and I don't mind that. Just going to tone it down so the colors still show through but they're they're paler I know this seems like a pain in the rear project but I I really like the income the income yeah I'd like the income the outcome goodness Billy talk this morning so um yeah there's piece of my brush. This is an old brush. It's right there. I see it. Get rid of that little piece. So this is what I'm doing. I've got my laptop top set up here and I am watching uh, uh, an artist named, called Epoxy Me That and she does very beautiful work. And um, Coral Marine, I just finished catching up with you today. So check out Coral, uh, Coral Marine and epoxy me, epoxy me That. And that's with a epoxy capital M and then the number three. And then the word that. I'll put their links in my description. See the difference already? It's going to have a great shimmer, but it's going to have the colors underneath. So any paint will do underneath. I just wanted to try those new paints that I got. Um, but use whatever is available or markers. Work just fine. But, you know, I just didn't want to waste these resin creed pieces just because I got sloppy and broke them off of there so this is why I'm gonna make something very beautiful out of this the polyurethane dries quickly so by the time I get down to the bottom I'll just start another coat from the top down so I won't hold you up today. Enjoy yourselves. I'm going to keep after this. And then we'll be ready to mount this and the dragonfly once I get the antenna put on the dragonfly. Which means, because that, I broke those off. So I'm going to use wire. So that'll be just drilling a couple of holes in the head and then putting wire with a few little curly cues on top for the antenna then once we put it all together I've got another accent for the frame and I'm sure you'll love it so I will see you in a little while enjoy yourselves I'm back I had to get back to the frame I'll tell you what the flower oh is beautiful it's drying the uh, dragonfly I have the antennas in. I've decided I'm going to resin the frame just a little bit. Like, oh, if I can just get an eighth of an inch on top, maybe just enough to cover 
these um, this trim will be in good shape. All right, so in order to do that, we need, and what I did off camera, I took a little uh, UV resin and went around the edges here and used my lamp to cure that. But to ensure that I'm not going to have resin seep through, we are going to, first of all, remove these little attachments. We don't need these anymore. We won't need these. And, uh, oh, I was looking, I was looking at, I was looking at, you know, I was looking at this. <laughs> It looks like a bug's body. It looks like a butterfly body. Or it can go into my steampunk things. But uh, anyway, let's get these off real quick. Oh, come on. I have the wrong size screwdriver, which doesn't help matters. Could be a little bigger. A little pressure. Anyway... While I was off camera, I set everything in this frame, and it is going to be, oh, amazing, amazing. That's why I'm leaving you with the suspense. I'm leaving it all to the very last. I don't mean to be cruel. That's not cruel, is it? Um, but I think once you see it all together, you will be totally amazed, because I think it's going to be fantastic. Come on, you. Get off of there. That one wants to be stubborn with me. And it's snowing. We had nice weather for a week, and now it's snowing. But I guess it's crazy all over the country, isn't it? All right. There we go. I've got these little, what do they call them? Um, finger condoms. I'm just going to put them over two fingers because I tend to use these two fingers when I put on the uh, latex. Now, I have mine in a little squirt bottle. I'll show you the, um, I'll give you the link to the actual bottle. I could have brought it in here, or I can show you when we pour the resin what it is. But I put it in a squirt bottle. Whoops. Just seems a little easier to handle. So I'm just going to go into that seam. And it dries really quickly. I didn't need that much in the corner. But I'm just going to wipe it down here. I might have overdid, but let's be a little safe than sorry here. But I think resining the bottom is going to be the ticket. This is so slick. I'm trying not to get so much out. Liquid latex, that's what it's called. It's what they use for Halloween to make masks and things on your face. Didn't know that, but that's what the bottle shows. Get this in there. Whoop, look at that sticking to me already. Yeah, it, it dries really quick. Let's use the other finger. But I, I was looking, I'm over top, I'm sorry. I was looking at the, um, oh goodness, am I recording? Yeah. You know, at this frame, and I'm thinking, oh, I know I glued everything down, and then with the polyurethane, you know, that's a great adhesive, but I think just to be sure that this will last um, and be very sound, that's why I think I'm going to resin it. Oh, I've got an Annie here on the tip of the bottle. Right there. 
All right, I'm gonna let this dry, and I will meet you in the my back porch where I do my resin and uh, I'll have some mixed up. I'm going to use my Let's Resin uh, one to one part regular resin and then we'll set everything in. Promise. Okay, I'll be right back. Hi there, I'm back. Um, I just mixed up four ounces of, yes, excuse me, eight ounces of my Let's Resin resin. Four ounces each makes my eight ounces. And I have that in my Resineers bubbling, debubbling machine right now. And while that's going, I, I set it for nine minutes because I don't mind. I just assume this uh, piece be tacky before, or not quite tacky, but not so fluid uh, before I put the flowers in. So I got these from Timu a while ago, and they're really nice corners. They're just silver, silver corners, and I thought I would like to put them in each corner here. So rather than waiting till the resin's in and having them float around possibly, this one's bent. I'm thinking I might stick them down with a little glue while the debubbler is going. So while that's happening, let's take these gloves off. I'm going to just try to get these down, but I don't want to go over them. So, oh, that's a catch 22. If I'm very careful, I can pour. No, let's wait. I have to wait. Gosh, I'm not with it. I just have to wait until the resin's in and I want to get it just to the height of those, that trim, and then possibly they won't float around. But let me show you while we're waiting. I don't know if I showed you the lion that I had done uh, out of uh, resin crete, and I had hand painted it orange and dark browns. And I went ahead and used the, the same technique um, as we did with the flowers today. And I did it on this lion because there's there's a f big bubble here, hole, and I refilled it. I mean, I could only fill this mold so high and then I had to add more. And by the time I added the more, which was just a ne the next batch, I got these lines around there. So I wanted to cover those up. So I went ahead and redid him. Now I think he looks quite, quite good. And you cannot see that line too terribly badly. So, and I just colored him with markers orange. He was bright orange. And then I did the browns and yellows on the main. And I think he turned out really cool. So I might put him in some kind of a tray. All right. And let me go ahead and show you. Ooh, I don't want to show you. I'll show you. Off camera, remember when I was putting the black lines around the dragonfly? Look at that. Isn't that pretty how he turned out? Look at those colors. The colors are underneath. You can still see them, but it just softened everything up. And I went ahead and just curled a couple of pieces of wire drilled a couple of holes, put those in for his antennae. So there is, oh, he's gorgeous. The dragonfly, and then the flowers. The flowers oh, are, look at that. It just made them so pale, got rid of the bright yellow. Um, I pretty much covered the browns here, but the leaves are nice and soft, and look at that, how it's going to, isn't that going to be pretty on the frame? I think so. Oh, I'm anxious. Well, the debubbler's got about a half an inch of bubbles on top. I did warm my resin today. My my old heating mat that's a bit warped. I've been just setting that aside and turning that on with my my resin on top to heat up those big jugs. And I did get these were gallon jugs each, so I got it two gallon uh, 
set of resin there but I'm gonna have to get more soon it goes a long way but let me see how, how many minutes we have we're almost done so let me go ahead and pause you again when that's done we'll go ahead and pour you don't want to wait another three minutes okay I have it out there's still a few bubbles left in there I'm not gonna worry because this resin debubbles itself really nicely and since it's going to be on a flat surface, I'm sure it'll debubble even, even quicker. But then a thin surface, surface, surface takes longer to cure. So very carefully, I'm going to grab a chair here. And uh, I want you to know I wear my PPE, my ventilator mask when I pour or when I mix. But uh, I take it off so I can let you know what's happening. I have it on my leveling board, which I tried to re-level. So let's hope. Let's hope that does a trick. And I have my heat gun handy, so that's about as thick as I want it everywhere. I don't know if the full cup is going to be enough. But... Uh, like I said, I just want everything to be intact. If, I don't think these will move because they'll be sitting right on top. And I just thought that's another little added accent. I think they're pretty. Since the, since the frame is actually, you know, pretty plain, I just set those in. Those are not going to move, but they will stick. There's enough resin there, so they'll stick. Okay. Get this one over here. Come on, you. Don't get stuck in my... They look pretty flat. I think that's I think that's a really nice touch. And the lace makes it look like a um you know the inside of a frame. The what are those called? There we go. Oh I like that. What a difference already, isn't it? Alright. This is gonna be the bottom. So, here we go. And this will also keep that broken part of the flower from breaking. And I just want to have this... Oh no, I just broke the leaf. Did you see that? Oh, the paint held it together. Man, Billy, how did that happen? Oh, you, okay, it's going to stay there. It's just setting in a little enough to just hold it. I put resin right there, darn it. Look at me, bare hands and resin. Don't do that. But I want to smooth it out. Can't believe that broke, but that mold is pretty thin. If it were resin, it'd be a whole different story. I like that. Bubble there. All right, don't do what I do. I need some alcohol. My hands get that off. Get my glove back on. But isn't that pretty? Oh. So pretty. Now, if I keep, I want to get this off my gloves too, in case there's any resin. Spray of alcohol on there. And it looks like somehow some resin got there too. So wipe that off. Or just make it so it's not a visible line. Is that coming over? Yes. Bubbles are coming up, so I will have to watch. I dropped it so quickly and I didn't shimmy it, you know, there like that. Try to force some bubbles out. I can't believe I broke that. 
All right. There's purple there. Get away. We don't want you here. Something there. Bubble. Let's move you out. I'll look, I'll look for some more, but... Okay, if I can do the dragonfly without breaking it. So I wanted the flowers a bit of an angle this way. And there's just enough room for him. I'm going to do this without dropping it. Lower it down a little bit. Sort of like that. Yes. Sort of like that. Let me give him a little jiggle. Bring him down a little bit. There. Oh. I hope you like this. I think it's gorgeous. He doesn't want to move. I want to move him. That. Oh, God. I keep sticking my fingers in resin. Really? It's, his gloves are like a size too big. That's my excuse. Oh, it looks good. Looks good. It doesn't want to get over this piece of lace. I like it to come over just a scoosh. Do this. Oh, come on. Just over, over a little bit. As I spread it every place. Now we watch me jigger it and we'll end up right where I had it in the beginning. I want it. Oh, see. Fingers. I want it over that lace so I can at least have the correct spacing. There. Yeah. Something like that. Now I can try to get the same. That's what I'm looking for, distance between all of it so that is pretty much in a good spot now the flower we've got a gap over here but I don't think that matters I think that just makes it look pretty darn good actually all right I'm gonna try not to fuss with this too much just make sure I can catch any bubbles that come up or Wipe up any resin I accidentally spilled on top because the frame is not deep enough to even glass it, so that's why I chose to do the resin. And uh, I hope you like it. When this sets up, probably this evening, I should be good to go and I can get the alligator hook on the back for hanging. Have no bubbles. I'm going to cover this and. Uh, there it is. What should we call it? I don't have a name, but I think it's beautiful. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun doing this. Um, I hope you try this technique. It's very simple and it just looks so pretty on your, on your pores. And uh, I hope to see you soon. Take good care, everyone. Big hugs. Bye-bye. Well, here's the back. I finished that off nicely. I was able to find a piece of thick cardboard. Got my alligator hook on there. I'm going to put it on the wall for you, but here's a little bit of a close-up. Isn't that pretty? I love it. Thought it turned out really nice. Really pretty. So let me get it on the wall for you. I'll be right back. Okay, there it is. Pardon the glare. I just hung it in my living room. Uh, doesn't go with my wallpaper real great, but yeah, I thought it turned out really, really pretty. Look at that dragonfly. Resin came out great. No bubbles. I love the edge. That's a glare right there, as you see on the side of the frame. That's just a glare, but it's not looking like that. It's quite even. I like the little silver pieces in the corner. I think that just touched it off really, really pretty. 
So thanks for watching everyone. This was a fun project, a little time consuming, but a little different. Hope you liked it. Take good care. I'm sending big hugs. Bye.